All right, so you should have a copy of the work. Uh, you should have a copy of the files from Tuesday. You should have the completed pouch project. And you should have a copy of last month's work for the MySDCE project. So the, the pouch project, it um, should work. Just adding some data, saving that, showing it, able to delete. Able to modify. So that's how we ended up with last time. The database is working. Uh, visually, not that great looking, but once we integrate it into our project, it should look a lot nicer. Because remember, our project is using jQuery Mobile, which has this built-in, nice-looking functionality to it. So we're going to take this and put it into our My SDCE Android project, our Taco project. So. Um, I'm going to open the that index file in Notepad. It's made out of two things, basically some HTML and a lot of JavaScript. So we'll need to integrate that into our SDCE project. I've got a copy of my project over on the My Apps folder. Um, put today's date on it. And so inside, uh, you should have then the my SDCE project. We're back in our taco project. Inside the WW folder, first we'll open up the index file in Notepad. I'm going to take a quick look at it in Chrome. I'm just going to run it very quick, uh, not in taco or anything special. I'm just going to run it very quickly uh, from, from Notepad because we're going to need to do a little bit of, of cleanup and a decision about how to add this uh, to our project. When we last worked on this probably two to three weeks ago, uh, we were kind of playing around with a few things such as the camera feature and adding unique icons and buttons and that sort of thing and we left it at this point. So I want to kind of clean up a little bit of that code and give it the real functionality that I want a button for about information and about and a button for like my classes. Uh, the concept here is that the database is integrated into our project and that the student downloads this project and they're going to save a copy of their class schedule and such. Um, so we'll need to open that index file in, in Notepad. in the home section. We'll do some deeper cleaning and such a little later. Um, and what I mean is we need to go through the various lines of our code and clean up what we don't need. For the moment, like I'm seeing that Google map that we never use and we've got a better one so we delete that at some point. But what I want here is line 68 We've got the my account. Wait, what is that one? Account. Okay, that's that button that we created via a class. That was our practice where we used classes to create a button instead of the data role and such. Um, and we put my icon into it. We're not going to use that button. That was just a proof of concept. So I'm going to delete um, line 69. Just going to delete that completely. That was our button. So I took out that button that had my little picture on it. We may or may not want to use it up there. 
But anyway, I removed that, that button. It's not really functional. It was just proof of concept. Notice line 71, we've got an image placeholder. If we were using the camera, we were taking a photo, showing the picture on screen somewhere. We're not going to use that functionality at the moment, so we'll remove that line. Line 71. So basically the second row in this grid is empty. And what we're left is with the button for the about and the button for the camera. We're going to repurpose that button to uh, let us save our classes. So let's change the text in the button. Instead of camera, we'll have it say my classes. The data icon is no longer a camera. Uh, we'll probably have some button that would really apply, but let's uh, use one called grid, data icon grid. The ID, we, we could leave it as is, but uh, that, that ID we'll call it BTN classes. This is our button to display the screen where we're going to have this whole pouch DB, these inputs, and all of that. And we, we won't do it very fancy. We want to click that button, display a new screen where we've got those input fields. So we'll go back to the href and we'll point it over to pound mm, my classes. We need to create a screen in order to display those classes. And uh, I think we'll add also an animation. We'll make this screen slide up. We're going to hit the button, My Classes. It'll slide up a screen where we've got our input buttons and the result resultant table. So we've got href, My Classes, data roll button, data icon grid. And before the ID, we'll add data transition. slide up. One word, lowercase. It can be whatever as long as you remember to use it consistently. Uh, well, I suppose we've been doing the camel cap, so we might as well continue that. It can be anything as long as, as we're consistent, and we've been consistently using capitals in the middle, so we might as well. What we've done there is simply repurpose that button. My classes doesn't go anywhere yet. We haven't created that screen. Here's the code so far. I took out those elements from the second row of the class of the grid that is, and then I changed up that button on line 66 just a little bit. I gave it a real href, changed its icon, gave it a data transition, an ID, and changed its text. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the document and find myself a spot to create a new section because I'm referencing here href a section my classes. So I'm going to just control end to go all the way to the bottom. So I've got on line 296 a comment where I'm saying my basic computer screen ends here. So on line 297 before my jQuery stuff um, I'm going to create a section data roll page. It's been a little while since we did this. ID, the My Classes ID. Spelled the same, of course, and remember we do not put the pound sign right there. The ID basically means the pound sign. 
Inside the section, we'll have a header. Data role header. I like that add back button. This is going to be one of these screen, like, remember when we talked about screen design A, B, C, and D? This is one of those where it's going to be similar to like the basic computer classes, that it's rather self-contained. And so I'll have a back button true. Um, we did do it for some of the other ones, but we'll do data um, position fixed. Let's fix that header to the top so that it doesn't scroll away once we scroll up or down because we might have a long table. And if we have to scroll up, I don't want that header to disappear. Inside the header, then we add our heading one. This will be my classes. After the header, the article. The article is our main content area, so remember what we need to do for there. I'm just referring back to my line 292 where I'm adding a role of main and a class of UI content. Heading to some sort of message to the user what this screen is about. Um, it will say something like, save your classes save a class and change it of course I'm going to give myself these comments Remember the comment to kinda of help us delineate our sections this is our um, add a class screen And afterward, of course, it ends. And these comments are optional, but as we look at, we're at, we're at 300 lines of code just in our HTML file. And so it'll be easy, it'll be easy to, to lose track of all of this if we give ourselves comments and such. We can hopefully navigate a bit better. So let's see if this works. Save it and run it. We should have that button. Click it, and it should open up this basic screen here where we then need to populate it and such. Again, I'm just running it very quickly from the Chrome browser. I'm not doing taco run or anything like that. Uh, I don't quite need that yet. My classes slides up. My classes save a class. Back button. So this screen is, a, is going to be where we're going to use our pouch, input fields and such. When we were working on our pouch project, we had basically everything in one file for expediency. We had the HTML structure, and we had the JavaScript interactivity. We will separate those two, of course. We've got an HTML file for the HTML, and we've got a JavaScript file for the JavaScript. So here inside of the article, I'll give myself a little space. And now I'm going to go over to my index file of pouch. And really the only thing we need here are lines 9 to 17. Everything else, of course, is from a standard HTML file, and there's all that JavaScript stuff. We don't need that heading. We've already got a heading. So I'm going to need the form, where the form ends, and the div to show the results. So I'll copy all of that block eight lines so copy all that block of user input and then we will paste it into mine is line 304 in this add a class screen I'll paste it right into there 
me clean up my alignment and such. I brought all those lines in. The form and the end of the form and the div for results. I want to take a quick look if that's working so far, so I'll go back to my browser and refresh it. There it is there. So right away, without anything special, I'm getting kind of a nice-ish looking project already, whereas the plain old project over here, it's very basic and jumbled, and here with jQuery Mobile, it's already looking nice here. Look at how it understood that something is set as a label for the input field, so it put it on its own line. Then the input field on the next line and so forth. Each of the buttons then is taking up its own uh, its own block. I may want to change that. I might want to add icons. Now that I've brought it into uh, my project with jQuery Mobile, it might be nice to add some icons. So we've got a save class, clear fields, and we've got show classes. Take a quick look at the icons over at jQuery Mobile to get some ideas about what I could use for my icons. These are up to you, of course, but let's see. I want an icon that delineates that I'm saving a class. Maybe the check mark. Maybe even the heart. People are using the heart like a favorite nowadays, maybe like to save conceptually. I don't see like a little floppy disk. That's a popular one that people use to save. Let's say I'll use check. So what I'm saying is we've got these buttons, input type, save a class, clear fields, and show classes. We can add jQuery data roles to these, jQuery mobile data roles. So uh, for mine, on line, uh, line 308, before the ID, remember I like to have the ID or the class as the very last attribute. This is completely personal preference, but I can add data role check. This creates a check mark. What's that? Oh, sorry, yes, data icon, data icon. So we're adding an icon, the check mark icon. So now I've got a little check mark when I save a class. Clear fields, I saw a couple that I, that I kind of like. There's this like forbidden one to cancel. There's also the X, which is delete. The pencil. Notice it's not a pencil, it's edit. Uh, I'm going to go with um, delete. A little cross out. So we've got input type reset and value, and I'll add the data icon. Delete. So I've got my, uh, my clear fields, little x, show classes. Something here might make sense as to showing a list of my classes. The i, yeah, view classes, that might be a good one. Yeah, bullets maybe. Let's do the i. So that one's simply called i. So to my show classes, I'll add the data role, or data icon of I, E-Y-E, -E, I.
some, now I've got some nice icons a little bit later I can decide to kind of align these a little better maybe I can put them into a grid of three columns so that all of the icons are on one row right now they're kind of taking up a, a little bit too much space in that they're in their own row but if I create a grid um, I can put them equally sized on one line like three for later In order for any of this to work, we need um, all of our JavaScript. So I'll go back to my index file from Pouch. We've got in we've got a JS file. It's kodika.external.js that is storing all of our JavaScript for our project. So we're going to need the JavaScript here. We will not need the script tags, however, because and as, on a standalone JavaScript file, this is assumed. So from my pouch index file, I'm going to copy from line 21 all the way down to 133. So it's 110 lines of code to get that to work. It's a little program. Uh, so I'm going to select all of those lines of code between 21 and 133, between the script tags, but not the script tags. In my project, then I will open kodika.ext.js. I will edit that in Notepad. We had some notes previously saying that anything we add to our project, we need to add it inside of our onDeviceReady function. Notice the very first thing is document add event listener device ready, so that any of our Cordova stuff works, that is triggered, then we run the onDeviceReady. That function basically goes on all the way to the bottom of the screen. We can add it anywhere. I'm going to add it toward the end of the onDeviceReady. onDeviceReady function to, for me begins on line 6 and goes all the way down to 90. So before, uh, after the after load name, give myself a couple of spaces to line 91. Make sure you're still inside of the onDeviceReady, not outside of it or anywhere else. I'm in the onDeviceReady. And I'll take all of this code I just copied from my old index file and paste it here. So what follows from about line 91 all the way down to 203 is all my pouch stuff. I'll make a little comment there. Pouch DB functionality start. So everything that follows is pouch. In order for any of this to work, what are we missing? We're missing the jQuery file, the jQuery pouch library. If we try to run it as is, it won't understand. What does new pouch DB mean? Line 92. We don't have the definition of what is that object, pouch DB. So we need to reference the, the pouch JavaScript library in our code, and we need the JavaScript library in our project. Let me, let me move the file in first. So I'm going to open one window where I've got my project, and I'll open another window where I've got pouch project. So from Tuesday's pouch project, I need to copy or move. I'm going to copy pouch db 
I'll copy that over to my WW folder of my, my STCE project. Copy that over. I need that library. So this is what defines all of that, all of those pouch uh, methods. I haven't checked if there's a new version of pouch. Maybe it's already on 546. Remember, in the middle of production, it's not a good idea to change our code while we're still working because something might be different and new that changes what we've been working with. So even if there's a brand new version 6.0 of Pouch in two days, I'm not going to go download it because I don't know how different that'll be from the work I've been doing. And back to our code then, I need to get from the Pouch index file line 19, there's our reference to using the Pouch.js file. It's after jQuery. So I'll we'll copy that whole line, line 19. It holds my PouchDB reference in my index file for my project. I will add it on, I'll add it before Codica after Cordova. So I'll give myself a new line 320. jQuery is often the foundation of things, so I'm going to put that first. Then we've got jQuery Mobile, which is our nice pretty interface. Then we've got Cordova, which lets us access all of the device APIs, camera, and all of that. Uh, then we've got PouchDB for our database. And then the last thing, our unique, specific JavaScript code that might override other things. At this point, it should work. Um, as is, but what we need it, what we need to do to fully test it now, we cannot simply do in Notepad anymore. Run Chrome. We can't do that anymore because if we simply run it as a plain old web project, we're going to get the error about where's Cordova JS. Cordova JS is dynamically created every time we do Taco Run. So I'm going to have to now open a command window, command prompt, to go into my project folder and we'll get back into using Taco. So I'm going to back up on my Windows Explorer here. This is the project I'm currently working on. I put in the JavaScript file, I put in the JavaScript code and the HTML code. Remember our trick if you hold Shift on the keyboard and right-click your taco project, you'll get open command window here. That's the quick way to bring up the command prompt instead of trying to navigate through it. That's good practice, but if time is of the essence, this is a faster way. I'm in my project now directly. I can run it on a real device or taco run browser. This might, this might be faster than your virtual device or your real device. Remember, we, we can run the browser. This will run Chrome again, but it'll run it as if it's an app, dynamically creating the Cordova JS file. And usually, after the first time it runs, it runs a little faster. So I'm going to run it in, in the browser. Go. I'm also going to hit F12 on my keyboard to open up the developer tools and I'm turning on my device view. So I've chosen the Galaxy S5 profile. There it is. I'm going to click my classes and save some classes. Save class. I'm getting some feedback as if I was getting previously. Show class. There's a class. And another class. I save the class. I show the class. Save 
adds a little gibberish for the moment. Save that. Show that. I'll practice with this delete. 4545. Five, five. I'm going through the motions of practicing with that with the operations of my project uh, because I cannot assume it came over perfectly, so I'm just going to check out its functions. Deleting the class, deleted the class, updated the table, made a little misspelling here, so I'll click the pencil, loaded it up here so that I can edit it, but not the CRN because it should not be editable. Go in and fix my name, update that, updated the class. So my uh, my pouch is working. I brought it out from the independent project that we were working with last time and last week. And I've integrated it into my app. It's still got a ways to go. It looks still not so good. I need to deal with CSS and other things. Um, but at least it's, it's working and it's got its own screen here in my project to, sh to check it's fully working. I'm going to then run it in my real device. It will be taco run Android device. I want to see how it looks on a real device. We've been checking it in the browser, and that's pretty nice, but it's obviously much more impressive on a real device or virtual. Taco emulate Android. So that's why I tested it in the browser first. It was a lot faster, and then now that I want to see it for real, it took about a minute and 20, and then it should go faster next time. It's loading up on my real device. I get my splash screen. Last a couple of seconds. In my project home screen, my classes. I get that new screen. Slides up and down. I can save a class. Brings up my virtual keyboard. In some gibberish for the moment. Save the class. Show class. And I've got my table there. So it's behaving as I expect it. And I'm able to delete. I'm able to edit. So I uh, integrated my project from from Tuesday into my project now. Now uh, we're going to take a little break a little sooner than usual. Um, I want to give you my code up to this point, uh, and then when we come back, we're going to deal with styling it. Uh, the table looks still very basic. I want it to take advantage of its space to stretch out. I want to colorize it. I want to do other interesting visual things to it. So uh, it's about 6.50, we'll take a break until 7, and then we'll go on.